actually working. Hey, you guys. What's up? So, I finally did it. I finally fixed the Viper. Now, if you're new to my channel, I have a 1994 Dodge Viper longer ago than I'd like to admit. The differential basically blew up. Now, full disclosure, I didn't actually fix the original differential. If you've seen my previous videos, you might remember that I bought a second new to me differential. The idea was to get it quickly fixed or refurbished and then into the Viper so that I could actually drive and enjoy the Viper while I took my time doing a complete rebuild on the original differential. And so what I did with the new to me differential is I basically addressed what went wrong with the original differential, which was the ring gear bolts being sheared. Now the original plan was to do a multi-part video series about the new to me differential. The process took so long and I ran into so many ridiculous little issues, I decided no one was gonna wanna watch those videos because they'd be way too long and way too boring. I had to cut so much stuff out because of problems that I realized I might just be able to fit it all into one sort of compilation of the process. And so that's what I did. Hopefully you enjoy it. Let me know if you have any questions and we'll see you guys at the end. And now, our feature presentation. All right, so here we go. I got this thing so that I can hopefully get the drain bolt out and then um, tip it and drain it without this thing falling over and crushing my hands or my fingers, which still might happen. So there we go. Yeah, that's what I was trying to not do. All right, I think we're back in business. Since I have gone through this once already, I'm trying to do this smarter and better and more efficiently this time around. So, all right, I did put the uh, drain bolt back in so that it wouldn't spill everywhere. Let's get him out again. Yep. I think it's pretty much drained empty. I gotta get this thing staged for uh, taking that off now. All right, here's my new staging. Um, nothing too fancy. Basically, I got this hanging on the edge. My uh, oil bucket down there. I'm gonna try to slowly take this off. Let whatever else is in there drain out. I got a half inch socket here, so let's see what happens. Welp, impact driver is not working, so I'm gonna break out the uh, breaker bar. So let's go through and break all these loose, hopefully. We're getting there. Okay. Just a couple more. Alright, they're all broken loose. Now I'm going back to my impact driver to bring them the rest of the way out. Beautiful. Let's take a look inside. Looks pretty good in there. I do have to do some cleaning. I guess there is a little bit of oil left in there, but um, not too much at all. Here I just propped up the differential casing so that oil, what little is left in there of it, will uh, just kind of drain out on its own. Then I'll start cleaning it out more by hand. So it's a few days later and I actually decided to uh, set the differential up on my oil bin to hopefully get more of the old oil drained out. So it's been sitting like this for a while. So I'm going to lift this heavy bastard back up onto the workbench and start giving him a clean inside and out. Oh my god. Ah. Let's get this guy positioned here to get cleaned up a little bit. Okay. All things considered, it's looking pretty darn good. It's looking fairly clean. I'm just using standard old brake cleaner to uh, get some of this old oil out of here. I've heard some conflicting things about brake clean or brake cleaner in general, but uh, I'm just gonna be very careful and not spray it around gaskets or plastic or rubber or anything like that. All right, that's a pretty good start for the inside. It's actually looking quite good. Just for the record, I've been cleaning this for quite a bit. I think that's pretty good, at least for now. I will go back and do another pass later on. But for now, let's start getting the outside cleaned up. Oh, man. All right, same thing as before. 
Give it a light a little scrub, try to loosen up any gunk that's easy to clean off. All right, I think that's pretty good. Okay. So now what we gotta do, start cleaning all this old gasket stuff off. I guess I'll have to move them again. Guess we'll give that a shot. All right, I think that's pretty good for now. I'll let them drain a little bit more. And a little more cleaning on the outside. So there's a spot right here that I'm gonna have to grind down because it's like a little barb. Yep, I think that's pretty good. All right, let's get this guy in place and ready to clean. All right, this thing's pretty well cleaned up. I think it's time to start focusing on the main differential body itself. So I think we just maybe possibly might be finally ready to start working on getting these ring gear bolts out. So in order to keep myself organized in terms of which bolts are the old and which are the new, we're gonna go around and mark all the old ones with this uh, little paint pen here. There we go, fine, I'll do a little bit more. And just like that, I've gone all the way around. So I'm gonna let that dry and uh, start breaking these loose one by one. Take one out, put the new one in, torque it down, and we will go from there. Okay, so before we get started, let me show you what I've done with the differential. I've got the front of it in my vise here with a couple of pieces of wood on either side so that it's not metal against metal. And then I've got the ratchet strap on the top. So that is my setup. This is more or less what they showed in the uh, maintenance manual anyways. So hopefully it works. We will see soon enough.
All right, I think it's finally time that we get this thing back into the Viper. We're gonna use this to help us do it. So basically, this is a homemade differential lift that I put together. It's just a couple of floor jacks that I sort of custom fit to the lift points. And I've specifically sort of shaped and placed the wood based on the contours of the differential. This is gonna hopefully keep it from tipping and rolling from side to side or back and forth because the last thing I want is for this thing to roll over, fall off, fall on me, smash my face, break my fingers when I'm trying to get this thing back in. Let's give it a shot and see how it does. I got into position. I'm not even gonna begin to try to convey to you guys how incredibly difficult that was. This differential is bulky and heavy and awkward and if you don't get it positioned in just the right way, it's not gonna go in. Now I gotta start getting everything connected up. you guys i've got everything connected torqued down with thread locker trellis mount left mount right mount main shaft left half shaft right half shaft tightened and torqued down with thread locker oil in the diff with the friction modifier all bolts torqued down to spec wow i think we're done i can't quite believe it but i think i'm ready to turn the viper on and see if it will move uh let's go Fingers crossed. I used my dollies and I swung the rear of the Viper out a little bit so that I don't have to do a 75 point turn. I can just back right out of the garage and into the driveway. Hopefully this is a better camera angle. Let's give it a shot. All right, you guys, and just like that, the Viper is fixed. It's running, it's working, it's moving under its own power. Fingers crossed, it hasn't been leaking. Everything looks, sounds, feels, smells good. As far as I can tell, it's ready to go, and I'm so excited. If you guys have any questions about the process, let me know, I'm happy to help. Summer cannot get here soon enough, and I cannot wait. I'm excited to bring you guys on the journey with me for the ongoing Viper ownership experience. Thank you so much for watching, hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you in the next one.